niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas wanna war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the floor, twelve killers wanna war, thirteen. What's up, guys? I know I've been gone for a while, dealing with a lot of personal stuff. Apparently, I'm bipolar. I've been learning how to manage that. I'm doing my best to stay consistent on this YouTube channel now. Anyhow, this video is a sequel to my advanced speed ramping tutorial, which is one of the most popular videos on this channel. People really like the way I explain speed ramping in that, and I just wanted to delve deeper into that and show you guys some uh, new techniques, some of which include reverse speed ramping, time warping to zero speed. Some people call this bullet speed. You know, the special effect where you have like a bullet going and then it slows down until it's like barely moving. That's a pretty simple effect in After Effects, and I'll show you guys how to do that. I used it at the end of that edit, and I will show you how like a little basic sound design really adds to speed ramping. Side note, if you haven't seen DrewKosak.com, check it out. I am now offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. I dropped my prices if anyone's interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me. Put in an application. Now let's get right into the tutorial. If you watched the first advanced speed ramping tutorial I did, if you haven't, I highly suggest watching that before this one. You will remember that the slope in your graph editor, so let's, uh, let's enable time remapping on this clip and create a keyframe here. Then let's just drag this last keyframe in a bunch. So the speed of this clip at the end is gonna be faster. Remember that if you click one of these keyframes and then go to graph editor, the slope of this line is how fast the clip is moving at any given time. So it's slower here, faster here, and you can play it through the graph editor as well. But we want to smooth that out, so I zoomed in a bit, and then I will do an easy ease out here to make that a straight line and keep it a very smooth transition and then create an easy ease in here and then drag this down so it ramps up gradually to the end. But I need to drag this keyframe in so that we actually see that. Let's make sure this looks smooth still. So now it should ramp up very smoothly. And if we do that in reverse on the next clip, so right click, enable time remapping, create a keyframe here. Just guesstimate where you want it. And then I'm gonna drag this keyframe in. You can also, so I undid that, you can also just create a keyframe wherever you want and then drag that in. The further it is that you drag it from, the faster that part's gonna be. So let's just use that. Go into graph editor, create the easy ease in there, and then an easy ease out here. And now, it should be a smooth speed ramping transition. Boom, there you go. That's a basic speed ramping transition. That's just a little review for you guys. Now let's get into reverse speed ramping. So on this clip, I wanted to speed ramp it at the end into the next clip. So let's right click it, enable time remapping. And then we'll drag a keyframe from out here in so that it's faster at the end real time let's get it from even further because that wasn't that fast let's see how fast that is maybe not quite so far because the motion changes i'm gonna delete this keyframe and let's create a keyframe at the very beginning of this clip and then I'm gonna create another keyframe here. And then I'm actually going to delete this keyframe at the end here. It was a necessary step to create the extra speed at the end here. But I'm going to delete that keyframe and then click this keyframe at the beginning. Control C to copy it and then Control V to paste it. And now the clip is gonna bounce back to the beginning and then bounce towards the end. But it looks kinda like jerky there. So what we're gonna do is go into Graph Editor, create an easy ease there, click this keyframe, create an easy ease there, and then just like smooth out those last keyframes too. I'm gonna have it so it ramps up into the end very smoothly. Let's zoom in here a bit. And then I'm going to have this one go regular speed. So I just wanted to match the straight line here and see how that looks. It looks like a little too slow to me, but that gives you the general idea. So I'm gonna pull in more time here. So let's actually delete this keyframe and then drag this first keyframe in and see how that looks. 
Let's just see how that looks on its own. Okay, so it seems like right here, it stops a little too much and we want more speed in there. So let's add some slope here so that it kind of bounces back a little faster. And then let's add some slope here because it was a flat line before. Now there's a little bit of slope there and it kind of intensifies this movement in the middle by adding more of a slope right here. And if this is confusing, I am sorry, just watch it 50 times. Long story short, the slope of these lines is how fast your clip is moving. Oh, that was a little too intense. Let's see. Okay, that looks cool. I think I want the ending to be even faster though. So let's drag this over to the left a little bit and you can edit your keyframes right within Graph Editor. Oh shoot, I did not want to select all that though. Here we go. Perfect. Now let's go back to the regular composition, trim this down, and then add the next clip here. I'm just gonna do a basic time remapping. And this clip is in reverse. You can see that from the blue lines here. So after we add our time remapping keyframes, there's a slight difference in how you want to go about adding your easy ease ins and easy ease outs. It's just reversed because the clip is in reverse. So we add this easy ease in here and then an easy ease out here. Normally it would be the reverse, but since the clip is reversed, the easy ease in and easy ease out are also reversed. So we have that transition there now, but I also added some motion keyframing here and just a little motion keyframing can really add to your speed ramping. So don't be afraid to play around with your scale position and rotation. So I added a scale keyframe here, press S to open up your scale. And then I'm gonna press U to open up all my keyframes. And then let's zoom in quite a bit here. I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe, press P to open up position keyframes, start the stopwatch, and then just move it around wherever you want this to go. So now it makes it look like this, but I want it to bounce back to the beginning. So let's copy and paste these position and scale keyframes put them back here. So now it'll bounce back to where it was at the beginning. And then we're gonna zoom back in to where we zoomed into here. So that looks kind of cool, but now we need to smooth that out a lot. So let's easy ease these two position and scale keyframes, then easy ease these here, and then easy ease in this one. Let's see how that looks. And that looks a lot cooler. I just want this beginning to be a lot faster, so I'm gonna drag these in. Takes a little trial and error to get everything where you want it. So that gives the general idea of how I got the reverse bump effect in there. Just because the keyframes start in a certain order with time remapping doesn't mean you can't switch the order and have it bounce back and forth. So that's where I made the motion in that clip look a little more interesting. Because remember before it was just like panning very slowly. In the edit at the beginning of this video on this clip, I did a lot of back and forth. And really all I did there was I created a keyframe at the start and then then I went forward a little bit, created another keyframe, and then let's control click this to turn it back to a diamond. Then I control C to this keyframe to copy it, throw it in here, and then control C and copy this keyframe, throw it in there. And it's just gonna go back and forth between these keyframes. And I kind of want to take it back even further. So I'm gonna control click these again to keep them regular and then control C this keyframe, or I'll control exit to cut it. And then I'm going to replace this one with control V. Okay. I'm gonna right click this one and make it an easy ease. Now let's see how that looks. And then let's do it again. So I'm just gonna control copy this one, add another keyframe here and see how that looks. 
And that's how I made that effect. I just matched it to the beat of the music and the back and forth looks kind of cool when you match it with the right music. So that transition ends up looking like that. And with the music, it looks like this. Of course, in my actual edit, I did a little more there, but just play with the keyframes and have it go back and forth a bunch. If there's a glitchy part of a song, for example, it, it looks really cool. And one thing you can do to really spice up the transition there is simply just adding a whoosh sound effect. And I'm going to place that here. Press double L to open up the audio so you can see it. And then it just adds a little more dimension to your speed ramping. So those are a couple techniques I used in that video. On the last clip, I did a little effect where the traffic is going really fast and then it slows down to the point where it's like not moving at all. And all you have to do for that, this is actually like super simple, is add a time warp effect to your clip and then you have to keyframe the speed from I don't know, some really high number, let's try 543, down to one at the end of the clip. And let's see how that looks. And that looks really cool. It goes from like a regular speed down to one. You can play around with the beginning speed, but at a point you're gonna run out of frames that your, your clip can use. So I think this should still work, 643 down to one, and if I open up my keyframes, you can see here it starts at 643 and goes down to one. And that's just a really easy speed ramping hack that not everyone takes advantage of. Um, time warp sometimes gets like warpy artifacts in your image, but generally it does a really good job most of the time. So even if your clip has like 24 frames per second, you can still slow it down to 1% speed like here at the end and it'll look pretty smooth. So yeah, we covered reverse speed ramping. We covered adding motion keyframing to speed ramping to spice up the motion. We covered using whooshes to make your speed ramps more punchy. And and we covered the time warp effect. I really hope that's helpful, just like some more creative ways you can use speed ramping that most people don't necessarily use. I know most people just like speed ramp at the end of a clip and speed ramp at the beginning of the next clip and that is it, that's all they use it for. But you can use it in the middle of your clips, you can do it backwards, you can do a lot of things with it. That's it for this video guys. I hope it was helpful, let me know down in the comments. Definitely gonna get you guys more content this year so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time.